Hi guys, let's get back to Iron Man. You all watched the first Iron Man movie. You know that Tony Stark kept upgrading his technology, built his suit, and the reactor in his cast. I've talked about this in a previous video. First, about the arc reactor. That's because it's a miniaturized arc reactor. And second, about Tony Stark's new element. Congratulations. You have created a new element. Now, I'm going to talk about his Infinity War technology. Nanotechnology. It's nanotech, you like it? Make thing this tech is even more unrealistic. How can this suit change shape forever he wants? But wait until you understand what nanotechnology really is. Because in reality, it isn't just some ordinary technology. It's something that can change everything just by being smaller than a virus. The game of science has different rules when you play it in the nanoscale. We are able now to atom by atom design new materials with design of functionalities. So watch until the end, because this is even smaller than a virus, but powerful enough to change everything. If you can get things to build themselves, just as in biology, I mean, we build ourselves. Okay, talking about Iron Man suit, have you noticed how it keeps evolving to be more portable? In Iron Man 1, Tony Stark had to go back to his lab to change into Iron Man. It was cool, but impractical. That's why in Iron Man 2, he made it more portable by packing into a suitcase. Then in Iron Man 3, he made the suit part remotely controllable, so he didn't need to go back to his lab to carry our suitcase. And in Infinity War, he just stabbed the reactor on his chest and the suit instantly formed around him. This evolution in Iron Man suit reflects how technology evolved in real life, becoming more advanced and more portable. This is ENIAC, the first computer ever built during World War II. It built an entire room and was incredibly complex to operate. It was highly inefficient until the 1980s when Bill Kate and Steve Jobs introduced personal computer, making them small enough to sit on a desk. Then came laptops, making computer portable. All right, amazing product here. Full-size keyboard, full-size display. And today, computer fit right in your pocket in the form of smartphones. Why did this happen? Because of transistor, the core component of computer that is smaller and smaller. Originally, transistor were vacuum tubes, where they kept shrinking and the scientists discovered semiconductor, which allowed transistor to be smaller than a human hair. That's why the chip inside your smartphone is smaller than your thumb contains billion of transistors. In 1965, Intel co-founder Gordon Moore predicted that transistor sites would shrink by half every two years. This prediction became known as Moore's law, and it turned out to be true. Today, transistors have reached 2 nanometer in size, smaller than human DNA. This is an example of nanotechnology, technology measured at the nanometer scale. So, what does this have to do with Iron Man's sweet changing shape? You'll find out soon. But first, you need to understand that the nanometer is not just any measurement. 1 nanometer is 1 meter divided by a billion. Comparing 1 meter to 1 nanometer is like comparing Earth to a marble. Or imagine a strand of your hair, which is 100,000 nanometers thick, meaning you'd have to split it 100,000 times to get 1 nanometer. At this scale, we enter the world of atoms and molecules, where strange things start happening. Scientists call this quantum effect. At the nanometer scale, all material behaves differently than they do in everyday life because they are influenced by the law of quantum physics. This is called quantum effect. Materials reduced to nano size can suddenly show very different properties than what they show on the macro scale. Did you know why geckos can climb walls? Or why fireflies glow? Or why chameleon change color? It's because they have spatial body structure at the nanometer scale. At this size, they can control the molecule inside their bodies. For example, cables have billions of thin hair, like structures called spatulae, on their tools. These hair act like magnet when they touch molecule on wall, allowing cables to stick and climb effortlessly. Dastardly, at a nanometer scale, things that seem impossible can actually happen. Even humans are unique because our DNA operates at the nano level. Human DNA is just 2 nanometer wide. It is stores all the information about your body, from head to toe. The human genome has 2.9 billion base pairs in it. So then, in principle, there is a finite number of human beings. But that number is 4 to the power 2.9 billion. It's a very, very large number. So the chances of you walking down the street and meeting someone who is exactly like you isn't terribly high. 
This is why scientists are obsessed with nanotechnology, because at this scale, they can create things never seen before. We are able now to atom by atom design new materials with design of functionalities. We can manipulate their properties. We can train them and make them behave the way we want them to do. Back to Iron Man. If you look closely, it should spread out like a liquid, which you call nanoparticle. I'm glad you brought this up because it's nothing. It's just a housing unit for nanoparticles. It's not helping. No, no. Nanoparticles are real in nanotechnology. They are material that have been broken down into tiny particles between 1 and 100 nanometers. At this scale, materials develop unique properties depending on their size and shape. One of the most fascinating properties is self-assembly, the ability of nanoparticles to organize themselves into specific structures. For example, scientists at Rice University demonstrate that cargo nanoparticles will self-assembly into nanowells and even power a light bulb. They call this process dyslaphoresis because the Nanoparticle transform when exposed to a Tesla coil. You can have, instead of, you know, when you normally build circuits and things like that, you have to have physical contact. Now we're talking about building circuits without actually touching them. Obviously, you're still far from building something like Iron Man suit, but the principle is the same. The suit form easily because the nanoparticle have self-assembly properties. This also ties in just generally in nanotechnology that self-assembly is very big. That is, if you can get things to build themselves, just as in biology, we build ourselves. Self-assembly is an actually the trace. Every molecule naturally moves due to a process called Brownian motion. Molecules all move all the time, right? It's a thing called Brownian motion. Molecules are all jiggling about all the time. The real question is, how do I control that? That's why scientists believe they can create machines at the nanometer scale called nanobots. Nanobots are essentially molecules designed to move in specific ways. For example, scientists at Rice University created a nanocar, a tiny structure made of hydrogen and carbon atom with four wheels that actually spin. And here, and here, and here will rotate if you shine light on them. At the craziest fact, there's even an international nanocar race. Yes, you heard that right. Scientists from different countries designed their own nanocar and raced them like Formula 1 cars. On this gold surface you see some higher parts and these are molecules on the surface. What we're going to try to do now is um, to move these molecular assemblies in a certain direction and this is what, what I'm going to try to do. Except the racetrack is only 100 nanometer long, 1000 times are thinner than a human hair. Of course, you can see the rays with the naked eye. Scientists use a scanning tunneling microscope to watch it. That's nanotechnology, where crazy things become possible. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? I'll wrap it up here. In my next video, I'll talk about something just exciting. Vibranium, the strongest material in the Marvel Universe, featured in Black Panther. Because in real-world nanotechnology, there's actually a material similar to vibranium. The thinnest material on Earth, yet 200 times stronger than steel, and more conductive than copper. This is a material which theorists like I have said, this is impossible. It's stronger than diamond. It's the strongest material ever measured. Stay tuned for the next video.